the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. God bless you, man. I had, we had a great study today. We're talking about the fact is that, and let me see if I can bring up the uh, the slide. But the main thing is this. We need to be able to encourage one another. We really need to make sure we don't be deceived to do and go to the contrary of the doctrine of Christ. There's so many things I'm looking at in the past, and the past discrimination, everything else. It's all because people said that it's more important to, to this, be deceived. It will be to be deceived, willingly not study the word of God, willingly not understand the doctrine of Christ, and start to go after the doctrine of men. Sometimes we talk about the different political parties. We would do, we'll go with the things of a political party where it's okay to hate, it's okay to discriminate, it's okay to do all the bad things. Because you think about it, some of these political parties start all the way from the Atlantic slave trade, start all the way from 1776, start all the way when this first country brought in slaves or brought in indigenous servants. And said those things that they do atrocities toward mankind. All the bringing division, all the bringing of strength. And then all of a sudden we went through the slave trade, the sex plantations, the, the atrocities, the, 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 the brutalization. It's just not acceptable and contrary to the doctrine of Christ. And I'm trying to sit there and say to you, let us do the things that make for peace. Let us do the things that are puts into the doctrine of God. So that's what the study is about today. The fact is, let's not be duped. Because so many people have been duped. So many people have been deceived. So many people have lied to and tricked to do things and ignore the teaching of Christ. I'm saying is, let's see what, and I'm just saying it right now. Go by what the Word says. Does the Word tell you to discriminate? Does the Word tell you to hate? Does the Word tell you to not forgive? Or does the Word tell you to forgive? Does the Word tell you to love? That's the doctrine of teaching of Christ. And if you are operating outside of that, and you feel that it's okay because you're approved by man, I'm telling you, it's not man that's going to get you in eternal life. It's not man's doctrine. It's not political parties, not the color of skin, but it's the love of God. Follow the doctrine, people. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Hey, have a great, happy Father's Day. Joy, Juneteenth, tomorrow, 19th. Juneteenth, 19th. Tomorrow, reflect on it. We've got a lot of bad things went behind those people getting to the point where they can celebrate freedom. And then that's appropriate to be able to have a day of celebrating the, 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 the long so that we can celebrate the right that we're all free. And yet, even though we had to make an amendment, we're all free so that on the 4th of July, we can all say Independence Day. Every man being independent to choose. And God gives you the right to choose. And that choice is life through Christ. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate you listening. And we'll see you when we see you. And don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll break this down to like A, B, C, and D, as always, so that you enjoy. So enjoy the study. And I'll see you when I see you. God bless. Bye bye. And, and let the word speak for itself. I think that's very important. The word speak for itself. When I'm talking about the fact is that people have been duped. To, to ignore. And I'm trying to say, I'm telling anybody that's listening, what does the word say, people? Don't be duped to ignore the word so that you can judge and condemn people. What does the word say? And this is what Christ said here in Romans 16, 17. I, I read that this morning, so I decided to put it in my slide. This is like a final instruction that Paul was given. Those are people like to follow Paul. Look what Paul said. Verse 17. Now I beseech you, brothers, listen to this, y'all. 
I beseech you, brethren, mock them that cause what? <laughs> Division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. And I guarantee you, he didn't teach you to hate. He didn't take, teach you to discriminate. He didn't teach you to, 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 to do bad things to people. He didn't teach that. So he told us to mock those who cause division and offense contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not the Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua, but their own belly. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about capitalism and trying to get money. It's all about greed and, and the own vain glory. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Because there's people that want to receive Christ. There's people that want to have eternal life. And they are hoping that when they go to a church, when they go to a ministry, when they go to somebody that is in the body of Christ, they're hoping that they're receiving the doctrine of the gospel as written. They're hoping that you know that what you're saying lines up with the word of God because they don't know the word of God is that it's not studying the word of God. But if you sit there and deceive people, and, and it's just, as you're interested, it says, in speech deceive the hearts of the simple. Many come in as babes. As the Bible says, you come in as a babe. But if you sit there and be taught by somebody teaching contrary to the word of God, because I think if somebody come in, the whole purpose is teach this word. This platform is all about what does the word say? Not what you think, what you feel, but what does the word say? Especially when you're talking about how you treat other people. And that's what I'm talking about today, is this weaponizing, people weaponize the gospel, using condemnation, using judgment, to try to control people and have run so many people away from the gospel. So many people have ran away from the gospel because they want to receive the gospel with simplicity and understanding. And yet you got people sitting there, and that's what I'm talking about white supremacy, black supremacy, any of those type of things, all those type of things where they where you put somebody else down. That that's not the gospel. The gospel means good news. People need to hear the good news. He says in 19. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. Your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I'm glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. That was basically giving people, hey, just do, just, just keep it simple and watch those who come in and bring in division and offense because that's not the teaching of Christ. They're doing something contrary to the doctrine. The doctrine is in the word of God. You got all these churches, all these ministries, and, and you got all this division. Instead of saying, look, what does the word say? That's all we want you. We want to be a word ministry, teaching people the word of God. All right, the next slide. The Bible says, and I encourage everybody, to study to show yourself approved unto God. Not unto man, but unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And the sad is, if you can rightly divide the word of God, you can also wrongly divide the word of God and start teaching people by what you're doing that's not right. So he says, study to show yourself approved to God. That's why this platform, so anybody that's going to listen to this after the video and everything, just look at the words and let the words minister to you. Not my comments, not my comments and commentary, but the word of God. What does it say? 16 said, but shun profane and vain babbling, for they would increase into more ungodliness. And we got a lot of people that sit there and got their own isms, 
but don't recognize that there is a must line up with the word of God. Because we're seeing too much of this bad stuff of people, leading people to do the wrong thing. Especially when we talk about, when I talk about Christian nationalism or white Christian nationalism or, or even white superiority, black superiority, and any other superiority, those things are contrary to the doctrine of Christ, people. It's not, it's not, I know it may seem good for a man, but it's not good for God. Look what God says in Jeremiah 17, 5. Thus says the Lord, cursed be the man that trusts in man, people. That's why the Bible tells you to study to show yourself approved. Because if you sit there and say, well, my pastor said, my, 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 my church said, what does the word say? Everybody, every preacher that's listening, and I hope you listen one day, some kind of way, or you that's listening, then you tell your pastor, what does the word say? Speak the word only. That's what I want you to do. I don't want your opinion. I don't want what you think is right. I want you to tell me what the word says is right. Because if you tell me what the word says, I can deal with the word. But if you're telling me what you think, because especially those that sit there and done discrimination, those that sit there and, and still teach discrimination or endorse discrimination, those who taught and endorsed slavery, those who taught and endorsed lynching, those who taught to endorse redlining where, where black people were executed or Hispanic were executed and uh, excluded and anybody else, and you endorse it and you call yourself a Christian? Don't do that. Do and teach what the word says. I don't care what your denomination, I don't care if you're a Baptist, I don't care if you're a Catholic, I don't care if you're a Methodist or anything else. Teach what the word says. Because that is that is the foundation that we go by. We don't we don't need to build a house contrary to the doctrine of Christ. So teach the word of God. So he said, once again, Jeremiah 75, thus says the Lord, cursed be the man that trusts in man. And look at this, it said, and make it his flesh his arm. Meaning make it his flesh his strength. Meaning his power comes from his flesh. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about supremacy. When we talk about nationalism. When you sit there and say, that's where your power base is, instead of the word of God. You do it contrary to the word of God, and that means you're cursed. And then you're teaching other people to be a curse because it's the word of God that matters. God so loved the world that you sit there and try to isolate yourself and condemn somebody. You're not doing what the word of God, the word of God said you are cursed. I'll read it in total now. Thus, Jeremiah 17, 5. Thus says the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusts in man and make his flesh his arm and who heart departed from the Lord. Because if you're not going to follow the simple gospel, which is God's so love the world, if you're not going to follow that, that simple principle of loving one another, if you're not going to follow that, and you're going to be content with hate, you're going to be content with discrimination. And see, that's why people that even my brothers is listening, when, when you try to go and bring that stuff on him, he may hurt you. He's going to hurt you because you're bringing in something that's contrary to the doctrine. He won't hurt you if you say you love him. He won't hurt him if you show that you love him. He won't hurt you if you show that you in include him. But he may get angry with you if you discriminate against him. That's what he's trying to say. That's where you bring the curse. When you try to hurt and ostracize and put other people down and trust in your doctrine, trust in your flesh, you're cursed. You departed from God because you departed from his doctrine. So that's all I'm trying to say on that scripture. Confront Jeremiah 17, 7 said, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, in the hope the Lord is. When the scripture says, Trust the Lord all thy heart and lead not to an understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. Many of us want to sit there and trust in man. Many of us want to trust in ourselves. Many want to trust in their denomination. 
Many want to trust in their political party. Many want to trust in their nation. But God says you're cursed because you should trust in his word. Because his word teaches you to do that which is right and bear good fruit. It says in Hebrew 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please who? Him. Many of us have been men pleasers. Many want to be want to be doing what people said to do so that you can please people, so you can be accepted by people. But God said, without faith it's impossible to please him. Either you're pleasing him or you're pleasing people. I said please him. I'm saying that my goal should be to please him. And I don't need to be validated by somebody else. I don't need to be to say, well, you ain't pleasing him. I don't need you to make that decision. I need him to make that decision. We need to have a personal relationship with God to seek to please him. Because for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. That's people. It's talking about the doctrine of Christ. It's to student faith that seek to please him. Amen? So that's that's critical in the teaching of what I'm trying to talk about today. Here's the next scriptures coming up. Mark 12, 29. Jesus answered him. Listen, people out there that's going to hear this on video and tape or whatever you're going to hear it or hear it from another believer or hear it from you. Let you tell them. The scripture says, first of all the commandment is hear all Israel. And that applies to us too. The Lord our God is one God. And thou shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. That's your flesh. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, leave, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thee, there is none other commandment greater than these. Now, so, <laughs> and Chris, you don't have to answer me, but, those of you just heard me read that, how, how, I'm trying to figure out how did, how could you have, how could somebody have lit somebody? It burned them alive. It cut their, cut their fingers off while they're alive. Cut their toes off while they're alive. Cut their private part while they're alive. Burn them while they're alive, and then lynch them, and then rejoice with it, and make postcards for it, and send the postcards out to other people, and said you, you did, that you love your neighbor. Now, may I, may I be crazy, may, Chris, may you need to answer that for me, because I, I'm trying to understand that. How, how, how did that happen? How, how, how could they confess that they were Christians. Well, a lot of the precept behind that is whether well, they accept you as an equal or as a man. And due to the dogma or doctrine or whatever Christian identity, white Christian identity belief that they had, they chose to decide to make us less than a human being. And what authority did they use? Oh, they they use church. Yeah, but what what what, what other the, when we talk about using the church, we talk about using the word, right? Yes. Okay, so what authority but, other the but, word? <laughs> yeah, but like you say, if you wrongly divide it, you use it wrong. You use it wrong, exactly. And and, and the thing is that uh, whether they want to choose somebody to be half a man, a third of a man, or fifth of a man. What part of that still leaves not to love them? 
You know what I mean? I mean, you, I, you, if you want to, you, because you know you're not going to find it in the, in the in, in, I'm, I'm just talking to everybody in general. We know that the Bible said there is no fifth man, or half a man, or sub man, or inferior man, because when God created man, he said in John, Genesis uh, 126, God said, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness. So there's no, there's no, that's a social construct, people, that the man, and that's what he talked about saying when I did Jeremiah 17, five, it said, curse of the man that trusts in man, but, and, and making his flesh his strength. That's a man that's sitting there and trying to tell another man, or tell another group of people, that somebody is less than. That's, and you and you believe that, and you trust in that, opposed to saying, show me in the word a person that's less than another person, and you won't find it. Show me in the word what somebody is supposed to do, the atrocities that were done. What Germany did, the six million, that mean they industrialized killing people, sending people to the gas chamber, starving them to death until they get into the gas chamber burning those people alive, stacking their bodies, their dead bodies in heaps until they can get into the furnace. Uh, the, 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 the atrocities that were done in the slave trade, the, 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 the lynching that was done after the Civil War, the discrimination that comes even up to this date, because you say that somebody is less than, even though there's no my, my point is, even if you want to trust in somebody to say that somebody that's less than, what's, what does that got to do with the anger, the hate, the killing, the murder? Because the Bible says, and we'll get to the scripture, it says that he who hates is a murderer. And no murderer has eternal life abides us in him. He didn't say he who hates his 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 equal is 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 it's okay to hate his less than. It didn't say that. The scripture says that he who hates is a murderer, and no murderer has eternal life abides us in him. That's what the scripture says. So these commandments, God said, because regardless of what people want to call your neighbor, your neighbor could be black, your neighbor could be white, your neighbor could be Hispanic, your neighbor could be Japanese, your neighbor could be anybody. That's why he used Samaritan, because if y'all look at the scripture about the Samaritan, they were considered rejected and less dead by the Jewish people. They were considered a half-breed or whatever they want to call it. And yet Christ used that Samaritan to show who is your neighbor. Because he said that the Levite, the priest, that passed by on the man that was injured. But the Samaritan, who saw the man injured, dressed his wound, took him to a place so he could be healed. He told that Jewish person, that lawyer that was a Jewish person, he said, go and do likewise because that is your neighbor. The person is in need, not not denominations, not uh, superior man and lesser man and all that other stuff that people want to try to save is, since it's not addressed in the gospel, especially in Christ. Then, then you're doing contrary to the doctrine. And then you're going to sit there and say, have I not prophesied your name? Have not I done wonderful works in your name? I, I lynched somebody. I, I killed somebody. I did that in your name, Lord. And that's what it was said. Not everybody that, that says, Lord, Lord, is into the kingdom of God because you don't do his will. And that's why he gave us the Lord's prayer daily. Thy will be done. Not man's will. To sit there and say somebody's less than, that is saying you trust in man. And you made your flesh your strength. When your flesh is not your strength, God is your strength. So we want to make sure people understand, listen and do what God says. In John 13, 34, Christ, Yeshua, those who profess to be Christian, because that's the difference between a Jewish person 
in a Christian. See, you're either a Jew or you're a Gentile. You're one or the other. He didn't say it as a sub-Gentile. He didn't say it was a, a superior Gentile. He, did, he didn't say it was a lesser Gentile. He said Gentiles. So you are a Gentile if you're not a Hebrew. And it says right here, it's a Christian though. Because he didn't say a Christian, uh, there's sub-Christians, there's superior Christians, or any other type of Christian. He just said Christians. He gave a new commandment. Yeshua gave a new commandment. And it says, the new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And then they said in 35, and Chris, you can listen to this one. This is a good one. If you want to comment on it, look at it. He said, by this shall all men, all men, whether you want to call them a lesser man, a greater man, a superior man, a uh, 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 three-fifths of a man. <laughs> All men will know that you are my disciple if you have love for one another. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eat is not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And that's, that's we're going to close up there. And that's what I want you to remember is the fact is we don't judge and condemn one another. We love one another. We work with one another. Amen? All right. So thank you for listening. We'll probably cover those scriptures again uh, next week if the Lord's willing. But the fact is, don't be duped. Don't be deceived. Trust in God. Love one another. Encourage one another so that we can all be on high all nations, all families, all tongues, all kinders. Let's not take the man construct because man construct, social construct, can send you to eternal death. And I fear that so many people, especially since the Crusades, all the way up to now, generation and generations, I'm afraid. Some of those people are not with the Father. Bible says, absent the Bible says, absent the body is present with the Lord. That's only if you're in the Lord. And the Bible says, the tree is no last for you. Amen. Hey, we all got things to work on. But the main thing we can at least work on is not to condemn one another, but encourage one another. That's what I want to say. God bless you. I appreciate you listening. And I'll see you when I see you. Have a great holiday. Happy Father's Day. Happy June 19th. Enjoy. Reflect on it. And rejoice freedom for everyone. God bless you. Bye-bye. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.